Here we have 9.4. And so this is now the comparison series test. And I will be completely honest with you, this is not my favorite section. And when it comes to the reviews and the test, if the problem does not specifically tell me to use a comparison series, I typically stay away from them, okay? Um, but they do exist and they are there and we do need to cover them. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So it says for the direct comparison test, it says let one series, the nth term of one series, be less than or equal to the nth term of another series for all n. If the second series that you're comparing it to, or either way, if this one's the one you're given and you find one that's bigger, or if this one was the one that was given and you find one that's smaller, you can make these assumptions. If the second one, the bigger one converges, if the big one converges, then it makes sense that the smaller one would also converge, right? If this one is adding up to a finite number, wouldn't something smaller than it also add up to a finite number, right? Um, it doesn't work the other way around though. If this guy diverges, you really have no idea what's going on with that guy, okay? Because he's smaller. Anything could be happening with th that guy. Now, if the smaller one diverges, then the big one should also be diverging. It's bigger than it. So if this one's going to infinity, that one has to be going to infinity as well, okay? It's bigger than it. So let's see, example one says, determine the convergence or divergence of this particular problem. Now normally, and I have a note down here, and I'm gonna use it as I keep going through these problems. It says, when given a series, Compare it with a P-series who has the same degree for rational expressions, respectively, or with a geometric series for exponential expressions. This is an exponential expression, so I am going to compare it with another exponential expression, one that fits the definition of a geometric series. So maybe something like this, which can be written as 1 over 3 to the power n. That with a coefficient of one is the definition of a geometric series. I've got my a, I've got my ratio r raised to a power n. The big thing is, is I need to figure out which one is smaller and which one is bigger, right? Now, this is what I'm comparing it to, and this is what I have. If I'm adding something to the denominator, it means this denominator is bigger, which means the fraction is going to be smaller than that one. So essentially, a n is going to be my original, and that one is going to be smaller than or equal to this guy, which is my b n, okay? And just verify, if n equals one, because that's where I start, then this would be one over five, which is smaller than one over three. This is 0.2, that would be 0.6, right? Or 0.33333. If n is equal to 2, you would have 11 down here, which is 1 over 11, and you would have 1 over 9. Again, the 1 over 11 is smaller than the 1 over 9, okay? So it does apply for all n. So that's going to allow me to compare it. Now, what is happening to this series, okay? So remember, I'm going to compare it with this series. which we know by our notation up there can be rewritten as one times one third n. And we know that the r, the absolute value of r, is the absolute value of one third, which is less than one. And according to the geometric um, series, it converges. I also know what it converges to, the a over one minus r, but that's not what they're asking me to find. They're just asking me to determine whether it converges or diverges. I really don't care what this converges to because that's only what I'm comparing mine to. That has nothing to do with mine. It's just what I'm comparing it with, okay? So what I figured out is that the bigger series actually converges. And according to this, if the bigger series converges, then the smaller series also converges. So this series here converges. Now let's go ahead and look at example. 
multiple two. We still got some time on this video. So here do we have, um, we still have an exponential problem here. So I can compare it to seven in over eight in, which can be written as seven over eight to the power in with a little one in the front, right? Now, let's see which one's gonna be bigger though, this one or this one. So if I'm adding six to the denominator, that means that this denominator is gonna be bigger, which means this overall fraction is going to be smaller. So this one is smaller than this one. So remember, the smaller one is a n, the bigger one is b n. So um, let's see what's happening to the one we're comparing it to. So remember that if r, and r in this case is 7 eighths, but if that's less than one, then we know that it converges, which means that this one will also converge. So if the big one's converging, then so is the little one, okay? Now we have um, this here. This is called the limit comparison test. So it says if a n is greater than zero, b n is greater than zero, and you take the limit of them, of the ratio of them, and you get a finite number, um, then either they both converge or they both diverge. So now you can compare it to whatever you want um, but if you take that ratio and you get a finite number, then you know that they either both converge or diverge. So you probably want to compare it to something, um, to a series that you know converges or diverges, okay? You don't want to compare it to something that you're still unclear as to whether it converges or diverges, okay? So one thing that we want to try to compare it to is, um, something with just the exponentials and the poly the polynomials. So here I have n, which is like a monomial. So I can compare it to, and I don't have to worry about which one's bigger or smaller in this test either. That's kind of nice. So I'm gonna compare it to n, which has the same power as this. I'm gonna apply it to this exponential, and I'm gonna apply it to the bottom's exponential. But I'm gonna keep the four, because it's just a factor. I'm not going to keep the one. I don't need to care. I don't need to worry about whether which one's bigger and which one's smaller. Now, notice this one will reduce. So, um, I'm keeping my power here. So this will reduce with that, leaving me with two to the power n over four n squared. So that's what I'm going to compare it to. So I'm going to take my, and this is the b n, the second one. This is a n, which was my original. So I'm gonna take the limit as n goes to infinity of my original. Divided by this new one. And you can rewrite that as the limit as n goes to infinity of n two to the power n four n cubed plus one times the reciprocal of this. Okay, so then the two ends will re two to the power ends will reduce, um, and if you put those together, you get um, so remember this is just side work. It's just letting me know what I'm comparing it to, just like all of that was my side work. Okay, it's just my reasoning or my logic for this answer. So here I'm going to get 4n cubed over 4n cubed plus 1. And if I apply my rule that I was doing for the other limits, take the highest exponent here, n cubed, and divide that each term. So I'll end up with 4 and 4 and then 1 over n cubed. This guy will go to 0 as n goes to infinity. And I'll be left with 4 over 4 which is one. So I do get a finite number, which means both of these guys either converge or diverge, okay? Now, let's look at the other theorem. So let's look at the one we're comparing it to. If I take the limit as n goes to zero of bn, 
the nth term of the series I'm comparing it to. If I get zero, then it may converge, may, right? But if I don't get zero, then I know for sure this guy diverges. So if zero as it goes to infinity. So as I do that, this guy will go to infinity and this guy will go to infinity, um, which isn't really going to help me um, in this regard. But I could do L'Hopital's rule because that's an indeterminate form, isn't it? Okay, so if I do L'Hopital's rule, let's see what L'Hopital's rule gives me. Um, if you're not sure how to take the derivative of an exponential, you can go look it up. But here is my derivative of an exponential. So it's ln of my base and then a to my base. A, same exponential problem. So 2 to the power n times ln of 2. And then the derivative down here is 8n. And this is not exactly equivalent because I didn't write my limit statement. So again, that's still not helping me because this will still go to infinity and that will still go to infinity. So we can take the derivative again using L'Hopital's rule again, and we get two to the n times ln of two, but there's already an ln of two there. So we have two of them. And then the derivative of eight is, eight n is just eight. Now I don't have the same problem because this is going to infinity, but this is finite. So I end up with like infinity over eight, and it doesn't matter what finite number I divide it by, I'm still gonna have infinity, which means that bn diverges. But since I got a limit when I took the ratio, that means both of them do the same thing. So if I just figured out that this one diverges, then I automatically know that that one's going to diverge too also means that a n diverges. So you really have to be careful with your steps in these problems because um, you really need to make your inferences because you're gonna have a lot of work and you need to make them make sense to the reader. Okay so this equaling one means that a n and b n either both converge or both diverge. You just haven't figured out which it does yet. So that's the reason why we continue with doing the nth term test. That's where I always start because then if it diverges, you're automatically, you're just done. You know that it diverges. But if this limit did come out to be zero, then I would have to go ahead and um, and try one of the other tests that we've learned so far, like the geometric series test, the p-series test, the um, convert the uh, direct comparison test. Those are the only three we know so far, and I would have had to have tried all three if I had gotten zero here to determine if b n actually diverges or converges.